Hi everybody and welcome. So for this video I'm going to show you how to make a pop-up box card using the Crafters Companion sets. I'll go through those in a sec. These are two I've made previously using the flower set. And there we have one. They're really pretty. This is another one I made. So they fold flat as well, which is great. Which you'd be able to make envelopes for if you haven't got any to fit. But they're really effective, very simple to make as well. I'll just turn that one round so you can have a look. These outside pieces I've just stuck on with foam. But yeah, I love these. I like all the pop-up um, box cards. They're beautiful. So they're the flower ones. This one we're going to be, it's called the Vintage Tea Party. So there you can have a look. They also do another set here. This is to help you with your construction. I have made these up myself. Um, I, will, I am going to do a separate video showing people how to do it. And you can obviously choose your own size as well. Um, but for this video I'm going to be using this so if you want to grab some construction card I'm using Crafters Companion white stamping card it's great for construction it's 300 GSM so I'm just going to grab a piece it's just an A4 size so this piece we need two of and this is going to help us make the actual box so what I tend to do is just line it up to the edge of the paper, that side and this side. And I'm going to use low tack tape. I'm just going to turn that around so I can see that I'm actually lining it up properly. So just stick that on with a couple of pieces. And this piece here that's where it'll cut to and when I've put this through the die cutter I'll show you how you can make it as long or as short as you want to so in theory you could have the box as long as this piece here um, but I'm just going to run that through the die cutter and you'll just need your external plates your plastic plates your plastic shim your magnetic shim and then obviously this so it's sandwiched between the two fo the folder your plastic shim and your magnetic shim so if you want to run that through and you'll need two of those so I've just run that through I'm gonna take the remove the tape gently so it's not doesn't matter if you tear it on the outside edge because we're not using that but try and be careful if I just lift that and then pull that away okay so obviously we had it the cutting edge facing downwards so this is what you should have so again we need two of these to make the actual box so this piece here um, is three inches, two, three. So I'm going to make this one here three inches. I'm going to make it so that that's three inches and then that's three inches. So if I just bring that here, mark it. So that will take it to six inches. sure that's on my line so otherwise my pieces won't be equal okay so I've just marked it there I'm just going to grab the guillotine you can use scissors or a guillotine so there's my pencil marking here make sure this is pushed right up to here so it's nice and square Put that down Okay, 
So all I'm going to do is grab the scissors, snip here and then snip here. There's one, and obviously I did one before, so I have two. So now I'm going to show you how to burnish the score lines. So just grab a burnisher or something similar like this. Now if you want your box to be like this, where just the three sides fold down, and this one is rigid here, leave that one as it is, don't do anything with it. As long as you leave one of these, but you may prefer to have all four of the flaps down that's entirely up to you I like it like this so do not do any if that's how you like it don't do anything with that score line there so I tend to if you can see here the indent is here and that's the way I'll score it not the other way because then you get less crease lines sometimes it's unavoidable depending on what you're making because um, it's just the way this box is, it's shaped. So I'm going to just gently press it with my fingers and then burnish it. And then this is the little flap here that will help us stick it together to the other piece. So again, just pinch it and fold and then burnish. Okay, so as you can see there, that's going to be our back. So this one here needs to go this way because obviously it's the flap going down. So again, just fold it and then burnish it. Okay, I'll just leave that one there. So I'm going to grab this one. Um, so both of these flaps can be folded down. And then burnish. And then that's going to go that way. So again, just burnish. So I'm just looking now. Have I done that the wrong way? Yeah. Hang on. Uh, yeah, so it's going that way. It doesn't really matter. I can just burnish that again. So yeah, if you, it can be a bit confusing. Just hold it up there so you can see exactly where it's going. And then I'll burnish that one. Okay, so that's going like that. So this one is going that way, the flap. But again, if you do it the wrong way, you can correct it very easily. There, so I know that's the way it's going to stick together. Okay, so I'm going to use double sided tape to stick this together. You can use a wet glue, um, but really, you then have to give it time to dry before you do much else. So, for the purpose of this video, I'm going to get some grab some red tape. It's, well, you could use this as cord red tape. It's double sided, so any double sided tape you have, you'd be able to use. Um, this one comes in different widths. I think that would be okay for this project. This one I've got in my hand. So I'm going to just cut it to fit the flap. Just to lie that down. And I've, got to, I've lost which way I am again now. Right, so it's going that side. It's definitely going that side. Doesn't matter if you're slightly over the edges, you can trim it. There we go. So I'm just going to grab my small scissors. Snip. Right, and press that in properly, nice and firmly. So that's going on there. So I now need to put some along this piece here. The 
glue tape pens I have used to do these and um, they didn't seem to hold very well they are strong but just for the purpose of this it didn't work okay so we've got the back Okay, so we've got a red tape here and a red tape there, so that will hold those together. But before I do put that together, I'm going to put in the um, pieces that go in between that hold everything in place. It's just easy to do at this stage. So in this set, you get this cutting piece here. We're going to do three of, and then I'll show you how we put those inside. So I'm just, I can use this piece of card. So all I'm going to do is obviously where the ridges are, that's the cutting edge. Stick that down with some low tack tape and I'm going to run that die through the die cutter three times. So I've got three of these pieces here, which again, just to remind you, I use that to cut them. Ridge side facing down, which is any dies that you use always have where the ridge is facing down because that's the cutting part. So I've made three of these, I've burnished them into what looks like a Z and then I've stuck some... Um, red tie um, double-sided red tape onto the ends so you have a choice here when you run this through the machine it gives you some grooves here I don't know if you can if the camera's picking that up let me just double can you see there so you can either use a cutting knife and cut through these and then insert the flaps through and stick them on the other side it's entirely up to you or you can just leave them as they are and then do what I'm going to do now so I'll show you so where these grooves are here, these markings, so I'm going to grab this once I've taken the tape off and I will line that edge there to where the groove is. So I'm going to do that for all three. I'm just going to remove. Okay, so I'm going to stick that one on. And grab another one. Oh. Butter fingers. If you're wondering what this is, this is a pokey tool. So again, just find the line and stick that one up. And then this one here will go on the third one. And just line it up and then stick down okay remove those so now I'm going to put the box together so I'm just going to take this one off here Okay, so I'm just going to be careful how I do this. Let's move those out of the way. Make sure it's nice and level before you commit. Okay, let's just give that a good firm press. I'm going to grab that, make sure it's nice, firmly stuck. Okay, so you can see there, just stuck that flap inside that piece there. So now this one, I'm going to take the tape off here. Tape backing, so I should have said. Okay. So now, I'm trying to make sure there's no shadows so you can see what I'm doing. Yep, I'm happy with that. Okay. So make sure it's pressed down firmly. So now, when I take the tape liner, the backing liner off here, of these three, and fold it like so, this should be level because it's exactly in positioning here. If that's right, then in theory, once we do that, it will stick in the right place. So I'm just going to take the backing cover off. One. 
but again like I said earlier if you prefer to cut through and then insert the tabs I have done it that way um, and it's quite successful it doesn't it does stick but I just prefer it this way okay so I'm just going to let them a bit loose and then I'm just going to fold it okay like that press and there we are and you can see that's nice and level and these these pieces here are what we'll use to stick on all the other stamp and die pieces that we're going to do but first of all I want to do some matting and layering for the panels so I'm just going to pick some papers and then we'll go ahead and do that again you can pick whatever coloured papers or card you prefer I'm just going to use some leftover pieces that I have so it's not to waste much because I tend to always have a lot of waste most crafters do you do get a lot of static with this red tape but it will just um, brush off so I'm just going to grab some paper and then we can go ahead and start making it look pretty so I'm just going to show you how I cut the panels for matting and layering I don't actually measure anything so I'll just show you an example as one if I wanted a panel for this one my larger one I grabbed whatever coloured card or paper I wanted to use and I'd, I would just line it up here so it's just probably two three millimeters short either side and mark again so it's about two millimeters to three and again this side here so I just got two little marks there and I grab my guillotine I'm just going to slide that through so where this pencil marking is here it's right on the edge again make sure this is pushed right up to this edge here and hold it firmly and bring it down so there's my other marking can do it this way. so there it is right on the edge of the blade okay and then as you can see oh put in the wrong so there okay so that fits perfectly so for the next piece i wanted it a bit smaller for my layering all i do is so I'm going to be using this paper here, so I'll just move the guillotine back. So on here, I place this downwards again, just line it up so it's about two to three millimeters short of the edges, then mark, and then mark, and then I cut that through my guillotine. I will need my larger guillotine for this because it's a 12 by 12 piece of paper. So if I just grab my larger one. so do it this way okay so there it is there you can see that pencil mark in there so make sure this is pushed right up bring it out and then there's my other marking i prefer to have it this way you can have the marking sits at the top but i just prefer to see it this side on the blade and i know then it's exactly how it should be I'll bring that down so there you can see that's a really quick way of working out what sizes you need rather than measuring but again if you prefer to measure you can do it just it will just take longer so to stick these together, I'm going to use Kalau glue or purpose one, which is this. I prefer to use a wet glue when I'm matting and layering because it gives you a bit more um, wiggle room. So if you use a glue tape pad, so once you stick it down, you're committed. And if it's a bit wonky, it would tear. So this is probably the best way to do it. And you don't need a lot, just a few squiggles. I just make sure it's brushed there's a this can you see that at the end it's quite handy I just make sure it's brushed to the corners okay that's plenty and then I'm just gonna hold it with my thumbs and that's it and that'll stick really nicely but here you can see I've got room to move it wiggle room okay so that's all you do and now I'm gonna put them onto my box alternatively you could have put these on before we put it all together but it's entirely up to you it doesn't really matter so 
So I'm going to do these pieces, the top pieces first. I'm just going to stick these on. Okay, I'm just going to press it in, make sure it's nice and firm. And do the back piece. I'm just going to bend it a little bit, just makes it stick, make sure it's nice and flat and not bowed. I really enjoy making these boxes. I think they're great fun. I'll show you the different ones that I have, the different sets. I think I've got five or six, I'm not sure, but they're all very different and but again you can use them for card making it doesn't have to be pop-up boxes so you get loads of dies with them that's one thing i really like because you can use them for other projects but they are easy to make they're not difficult a beginner could make these they can use leftover card papers okay come those grab the bottom pieces and again you can you don't have to have them all matching you can switch it up a bit you could have alternate like those two different those two different or just the top and bottom ones different just use your imagination or whatever like you say whatever you've got available i try and use leftover pieces up because otherwise i think you just end up with so much waste if you do like do what i've just done and dropped it <laughs> it will just wipe you can either use your finger or a piece of kitchen towel and it dries clear anyway you wouldn't see it so it's not a it is no biggie if you had have had your flaps, if you had have cut these and had your flaps coming through, these would stick over it, so you wouldn't see them anyway. Just going to bend those. I'm all butter fingers today. I like this um, sort of floral pattern because I think it'll go nice with the vintage tea theme. And I think the colours will go nice with the pieces that I've already prepared. But I will show you how to do them if you've never done them before. This one. I'll just go on the back so I've left that one blank because you can write your sentiment or message on there or stamp one on again entirely up to you okay so we've, we've done some matting and layering as you can see that's already looking really pretty and that's without anything added inside the box so I'm just going to move that to one side my glue lid back on so I have already made some pieces, but again, I will show you how, because they can be quite time consuming to stamp, die, die stamp or, or whichever order you want and then colour them in. Um, sometimes I just cut a load of pieces and then when I'm watching TV, I'll colour a few in. So I've got loads here. I won't use all of these. I'm just going to pick out a couple. So where's my, I'm just going to grab this is it here as well this gives you an idea of what you want to do if you weren't sure about colors or exactly how many pieces to make this set the pop-up box there's a lot of small pieces are not all like this but for this design there are loads of tiny ones um which is 
quite nice. So we'll pick some that we're going to use. See, there's even individual cutlery pieces, cakes and biscuits, teapot. I'll definitely have a teapot. In fact, I'll have a couple of teapots. But yeah, it's gorgeous. I'm going to use those books. But you can use as many or as little as you want. It's entirely up to you. I have a couple of cake stands. There's a little biscuit. Cupcakes. Tea cup. There's loads. It's really pretty. See, with that, you could put a piece of acetate in there. I might do that, actually. And then it'll make it appear as though it's a glass dome. Victoria sponge. The bunting's gorgeous as well. Let's find all my cutlery pieces now. But, um, yeah, there's loads. So I'm just going to put a few of these to one side. And then I'll show you actually how to go about making these. So I'm just going to start sticking some pieces on it. Um, I'm just going to, again, I'm using a glue tape pen just for certain pieces. And then other pieces I'll use canal glue. Um, the dotty tape pen, you have this one um, and just an ordinary one. They're both really strong, but this is better for smaller pieces that are more intricate. So I'm just going to run this over and then just stick some bunting. You can just go wild with this, stick things wherever. Right, I thought I heard somebody in my door. Apologies. I sort of zoned out a little bit there. Right, and then I'm just going to stick that one on there. So, but again, there's <laughs> no right or wrong. You can stick them wet exactly wherever you want. So, I've just made one of these. I've stuck some acetate behind it. I'll show you how I did it. Where have I put my pieces? So, all I did was, um, this is using my stamp and die set, which I'm going to show you how to do once I've stuck a few pieces on. So, again, I'm just going to grab my glue tape pan, stick that onto the acetate, and then just fussy cut around it. It's one thing I don't like about acetate, you can't see it. So I'm just going to stick that on and grab my small scissors and then just cut around it. Here I can just slightly go underneath, it doesn't really matter, the card. And I've got no edges of acetate around here as long as it's stuck to it, it doesn't really matter. It's really easy Again, just slide the scissors under slightly so it's still stuck to it it'll be fine and then round here I'll go around the edge because it's not very it's very thin it's not very thick it's just much more effective with acetate look at that it's lovely so I might actually don't know um, I've, I've cut some strips of acetate again I've lost them there they are because these you can stick behind the tabs and stick any of your other pieces onto it so I'm gonna have I'm definitely gonna put a cake strand on one of these so again that would go like that stick it on there and then we'll stick that behind one of the tabs so I'm just gonna put some glue on the cake stand Careful not to tear it because they're ever so delicate. I've messed that up. Because I've put glue all over, I can't put it on here now because what will happen is the pieces that overlap will stick on the rest of the card, but that's not an issue. I'm going to stick that one on there. 
because I'm going to use pieces anyway to go around. I should do another one. So what I'm going to do with this one is just run the glue tape pen down the middle. Mercy tape like that. That's all I need. And then stick it on my acetate strip. Okay, because none of these bits now have got glue. Because if they had glue, that when the card folds flat, it's just going to stick to other pieces and cause mayhem. So that one, I'm just going to trim this a bit at the bottom. So it's a bit longer than the actual tab that it goes behind. I'm going to stick some glue on here. And then I'm going to stick that one just on there. As you can see, you can see what we're trying to do. But I'm going to leave it there and I'm just going to show you how to go ahead about stamping and cutting it. So you have your strip of stamps and you've got your strip of all your shapes that I keep. I do, you can buy folders to keep these in. I do have some but with these sort of sets I find it easy to actually keep in the actual packaging. So we can do a teapot. Now I tend to stamp and then cut or some people prefer to cut the shape and then stamp onto it um, but I don't so I'm just going to grab the teapot I'm just going to put those there and then I'm just going to grab all the other bits and pieces that I need sometimes when I'm stamping um, or die cutting should I say I don't always use my big machine I've got um, a mini here, I'm just going to grab it. And what I tend to do is I'll cut a few of these strips, stamp a few along here, and then I cut and stamp quite a few all together. And like I say earlier, I just sit and colour them one night. So I've got a soft stamping mat, one of my rocker blocks, and because I'm going to colour in these using alcohol pens, um, I've got a finesse alcohol proof dye ink pad which is what you need you have to make sure depending on what um, sort of materials tools you're using you have got the right ink pad so for if, if for instance you were using aqua pens you'd want a waterproof one but this is obviously I'm using alcohol pens I need alcohol proof so it doesn't run so I'm just going to stick that on so the curved side here stick it on so that obviously the grooves are facing outwards i'm going to do that one and we'll do a stand and i'm just going to let that drop on because you don't want to twist it because then the die won't align properly so i'm literally just going to let that drop i've done it the wrong way don't do what I did, it's got to be the flat side. So you see there it's wonky. That's where it's probably advantageous to stamp onto the die cut. But what I'm going to do is, if I make sure that's straight along the line of the rocker block, that I can't go wrong there. I'm happy with that. So I'm just going to grab the ink. Give it a good coverage. Plenty on all the edges. And then we are just going to literally rock it. If I put that there, then you can see. Probably only need to do it once, but there we go that's perfect so now we're going to color those in we're going to color those in using spectrum noir 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 tri blend pens I cannot say it spectrum noir noir i'm going to grab those these pens are brilliant for coloring this is what they look like the tri blends so you have dark where it says it does tell you dark mid and light um the the nibs are good because 
they're not too big they're not too small but you can get whatever coverage you want because you can just brush them slightly but like i say even for small pieces they'll be okay um they just blend gorgeously so i'm just going to start with the dark again there's no it doesn't really matter and because the black ink is alcohol proof it won't run when these pens come into contact with them but they are gorgeous I, these are probably what i use the most in crafty the aqua pens are good as well and if you wanted to you could use them but again you'd have to make sure your ink pads the correct one I'm going to go to the mid medium actually sit for hours just colouring but yeah I tend to cut quite a few of these together and put them in a poly pocket or something because um, they are obviously quite small and then I'll just colour them one night okay so I'm just going to go to the light As you can see they blend gorgeously and it gives you a bit of depth and dimension. Okay. So the teapot, this colour, that one I did use if you did want to know, is the Hydrangea blend. And this one is a jade green blend. So where the like there it's quite thin, just press really lightly. Be fine. So I'll just do these pieces and then I'll show you how I cut them. This is again white stamping card, it's fine to do this. Colour in. Or you could use waterproof card, I believe. And you know, I think you don't need that with the aqua pens. I don't think you need that because this isn't waterproof and it's fine, it's more than adequate. But these pens are really good quality. I, I definitely get them again. I've used them loads. Definitely one of my better purchases. Colouring the flowers, a bit of yellow. A bit of purple. Switch to some lighter ones. Light yellow, 
the yellow is a gold yellow blend i think in this set i've got seven oh hang on i'm gonna have a look i've got them in a case you can actually buy a storage case to keep them in i'll show you I can't actually remember how many there are. Right, let's have a look. I'm just going to have a quick look at my case. So, two, four, six, seven. I think there's 48. I don't know. I won't bore you when I'm counting them. But if you have a look on the Crafters Companion website, you'll be able to see exactly what you can get. Okay, so I'm going to get the die cuts and again make sure the grooves are facing down where's my teapot gone I just need some low tack tape to keep them in position so again just make sure that's lined up as best you can okay that'll be fine And then the teapot. That should be okay. Okay, so I'm just going to grab the folder for the mini. That's all you need. I'm just going to remove that. There's the mini. Run that through. Sorry if that made the camera wobble. Okay. And there, easy as that. But again, if you prefer to cut your pieces and then stamp on, I've tried that and it didn't work for me. This way works for me. Um, but try different ways, see what suits you. And then I'm just going to continue sticking the pieces on all around. So once you have all your pieces ready, just stick them however you choose to. So you can put them all on the actual card or even just on these pieces. You don't have to use acetate like I did with that piece. I just think that gives you more height and just more options of how it looks. So I'm going to continue sticking those on and then I'm going to show you how to make a nice bow for the front. So we can now make a bow and I'm using the Crafters Companion Ultimate Pro. If you have a look on the internet you can see exactly what it does. You can make bows, boxes, envelopes, envelope boxes and you can do some embossing it's a great little tool but i will I, i'd like to do a separate video on this to show you exactly what you can do so i've cut two pieces of ribbon for now and they're approximately 18 inches long so these pegs here i think it comes with three these are two of them you just place them however wide you want your bow to be so that'll be fine for this one so i'm just going to hold the ribbon together wrap it around the pegs and then this right piece, which is this one here, we're going to bring over and then underneath, so back underneath. And then this piece, I'm going to bring underneath the back one here. Okay, so I'm just going to sort of pinch it with my left hand, bring it through. And then I'm going to bring it over so it's not twisted. Okay, try and get it central. I'm just going to make sure they're overlapping. And then all we're going to do now is knot it. That's it. It's really easy and quick, so just lift it off. Okay. I'm just going to twist it that way. Make sure that piece is over there. And then just fluff it up a little bit and then you can trim these pieces however long you want to be however long you want them to be so i'm going to probably go about here and there we have a lovely little bow 
and then we'll be sticking that onto the card I'm going to stick that on I'll probably use tacky glue for this seeing as it's fabric so I'm just going to move my stuff out of the way and we'll stick that on so to stick this on again I'm using kalal glue but this is tacky glue which is probably more suitable to fabric so I'm just going to oh that was good my pin's actually stuck in the glue the end bits this bit that sticks on the pin that stops the glue from blocking is actually um oh, just come off which isn't ideal oh, no right plan b no <laughs> right see if i can get that off right i've just took that off <laughs> I'll push it out in a second. So this is my tacky glue. I'm just going to put a great big blob on there. And then I'm going to just hold it. You could use um, a glue gun for this as well, hot glue. If I hold that on just for a few seconds, it should be fine and that will dry. So Just squeeze it on. Okay. No, nope, slide in definitely should have probably had a hot glue gun but this will hold it once it starts to take I just need to press it in for a couple of well half a minute probably okay that's fine that will take so now can you see that you push a pin through with the ball at the end and it stops it blocking and mine is well and truly stuck and that's never happened before it's going to snap I've got it that's no good. I'm going to have to um, discard that. But yeah, that stops it actually blocking. These glue applicators are great though for smaller pieces. I'm just going to stick that on and I'll have to get another pin to stick in that. Let's slide in again. Hold that there. It will stick. I've done this plenty of times. I'm just going to, it's because it's gravity, it's pulling it down. If I leave that there a second, it'll, it'll take, can I squeeze a bit more on? And then just hold that. I do have a hot glue gun. I've just not got it out ready. But next time, yeah, I probably would. If you have one, use it. Tacky glue will work, though. You just have to have a bit more patience. And just hold it. Okay. That was definitely all right. I'll just put that to one side. And then move my glue. So, oh, actually, I'll bring it back. So I've not shown you all the pieces that I've stuck. So, you can see there how pretty that looks. I've not put anything on the back because again you can write your message on there or stick a stamper sentiment it's entirely up to you but some pieces I've put onto acetate and others I've actually just stuck onto the card or you could use 3d foam stamps uh, foam pads I think because these pieces are really intricate it's easy to use glue most of these I use the Kalau wet glue and I used it, my applicator, it's the same as one as this, but with clear glue, all-purpose glue it's called. This is tacky glue, the clear glue is called all-purpose, but they're both cloud. They're really good. As you can see, that bow's well and truly stuck now, it's not moving. Um, so yeah, for the bigger pieces, I'll use a glue tape pen. And then the smaller, intricate ones, like the cutlery and whatever, I will use an applicator. So here is a 3D pop-up card is 3d oh i don't know you can put in your comments if i'm wrong about that um so all the materials that i've used are on the crafters companion website though you probably get them from other craft retailers and it, again just use what cards you have for the construction i would use a fairly like this was 300 um gsm i would use something similar otherwise it's not going to be strong enough and um, for your matting and layering it doesn't really matter 
um, for the acetate pieces as well another good tip I cut them about half an inch thick so if they're too thin they won't hold the weight of the card so yeah about half an inch thick just so that they can you know stand and not because otherwise it just wouldn't work same with these pieces I know you can't struggling to see it but yeah they're about half an inch thick um, but yeah I think they look really effective so I hope you enjoyed this so you've learned how to make a pop-up card a little bow a bit of um, colouring with the tri-blend pens stamping and die cutting so yeah please um, feel free to subscribe leave a comment and please give me a thumbs up if you did like this video and um, if you subscribe I think you'll automatically get notifications of any new videos in my description as well there's a link to my Instagram account if you want to have a look at some other projects that I've made but thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you on my next video. Bye bye.